write the equation of the circle in standard form and then give the center and radius of the circle. The given equation is in general form and we know it's a circle because the coefficient of the x squared term and the coefficient of the y squared term are the same. In this case, they're both one. We want to write this equation in standard form of a circle, which is this form here. Once we have the equation in this form, the center will have coordinates h, k, and the radius will be equal to r. So looking at standard form, notice how we have a perfect square trinomial in terms of x and in terms of y, so we'll have to complete the square on the x part and y part of our equation in general form. So to set this up, let's go ahead and write x squared plus five x. We're going to complete the square here, so we'll have to add a constant. So we'll put plus our constant here. Then we'll have the y part, so we'll have plus y squared minus, I'm going to write this as minus one y plus a constant, which will make this a perfect square trinomial. Let's go ahead and add six to both sides to move the constant to the right, so we'll have equals positive six. Again, because we're adding two constants on the left side, we'll have to add two constants on the right side as well. This will help to remind us. Now to complete the square on the x part, we're going to take half of the coefficient of x and square it. It's important to show this work, and I'll show why in the next step. So we're going to take half of five, which would be five divided by two, and then square it. So we're going to square the top and square the bottom, that'll be 25 fourths. So we're going to add 25 fourths here, as well as on the right side. Now it's hard to tell, but this is now a perfect square trinomial. And then for the y part, we'll take half of the coefficient of y and square it. So we'd have negative one divided by two squared which would be positive one-fourth, which means to complete the square, we'll add one-fourth here and add one-fourth here. Now again, it's hard to tell, but this trinomial in terms of x and this trinomial in terms of y are perfect square trinomials. So let's go ahead and factor them. They'll both factor into two binomials. So we'll have two binomials here plus two binomials here and then we'll have this sum on the right side. So looking at the trinomial in terms of x, we'll have x and x. We want the factors of 25 fourths that add to five. This is why it's so important to show this work here. The factors that we're looking for are five halves and five halves, the number that we squared in order to get this constant to make it a perfect square trinomial. So we'll have plus five halves here and plus five halves here. Now looking at the y part, we'll have y and y. And now we want the factors of one-fourth that add to negative one. And the factors will be the number we squared to get the one-fourth, which will be negative one-half and negative one-half. So we'll have minus one-half here and minus one-half here. Notice if we didn't show this work here in red, it would be much more difficult to find the factors that we need. But notice in both cases, these are perfect square trinomials. And now on the right side of the equation, we have six plus 25 fourths plus one fourth. Well, 25 fourths plus one fourth would be 26 fourths, which would simplify to 13 halves. These are both divisible by two. So this is actually six over one plus 13 halves. The common denominator would be two, so multiply this by two over two. So now we have 12 halves plus 13 halves, so the sum would be 25 halves. And now we can go ahead and write this in standard form. We'll have the quantity x plus five halves squared plus the quantity y minus one half squared equals 25 halves. So in this form, we can now determine the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius. Since we have the quantity x plus five halves squared, the x coordinate of the center would be negative five halves. And because we have the quantity y minus one half squared, the y coordinate is positive one half. And then to find the radius, 25 halves is equal to r squared. So if r squared equals 25 halves, 
we know r has to be positive because it's a length, we can take the principal square root of both sides of the equation, or the positive square root. This would give us r equals the square root of 25 divided by the square root of 2, which is 5 divided by square root 2, which is the exact length of the radius. But let's go ahead and rationalize this. We would have 5 divided by square root 2. So to rationalize this, we would multiply both the numerator and denominator by square root 2. So we would have 5 square root 2 divided by 2. So the exact length of the radius would be 5 square root 2 divided by 2. If we're not required to rationalize, we can just give 5 divided by square root 2. But if we're going to use this to graph, decimal approximation will be more useful, which would be approximately 3.54. So we have a center with coordinates negative 5 halves, 1 half, and a radius that's approximately 3.54. So here's the information the problem required us to give. But let's go and take a look at the graph of this as well. This black point is our center with coordinates negative five halves or negative 2.5 one half. And if we sketch the radius or a segment from the center to any point on the circle, let's say this segment here, it would have a length of five square root two divided by two which again is approximately 3.54. Okay, I hope you found this explanation helpful.